Good evening. Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting on January 10th, 2018. Oh my, my gosh. At 6.04, I think it looks like. Our clock is a little slow over there. So anyway, good evening. First thing we'll do is uh, pledge allegiance to the flag. Okay. Um, we don't have any minutes. They're not ready. Okay. Uh, select board comments. Do you have any? Uh, not at the moment. He board of Health comments. Just wash your hands. There's flu fl circulating yeah. everywhere. Town Administrator's report, we don't have anything. Um, appearances before the board, nobody. So guess what, like Kathy? That. Let's, why don't you come up? You had a couple come things you wanted to talk to us about? Yes. yes, yes, Like I said, I have a list and I wasn't sure if I should go on the, um, be on the agenda, but um, in 2010, Clark Cross Road is the parcel the road that goes from Mill Village out to five and 10, that was discontinued by town meeting vote. And one of the things that um, <clears throat> my mission is to clear up some of these things for my next generation. Mm -hmm. And that was one of them. I went to the, at the time, went to the select, Bernie Kubiak was the uh, town administrator at the time and I have all his, his notes and stuff. But um, I like that to be um, put over into our name so it's clear. And um, I know it, the, whatever the law says, it doesn't have to be, but at some point the farm will change from, from Steve and Kathy to Peter. And so I'd like that cleared up so he doesn't have to go through and not have to. Um, but in the meantime, I've gone through the selectmen, not the, excuse me, the selectmen, the assessors, and they say go to the town office, go to the town office here. And they say go to the assessors. So I'd like that to be finally just cleared up and put in our name. And even though it said we didn't have to go to the, um, um, you know, through all that rigmarole, but if in down the road when the name does change, the owner, that is one of the requisites. I have the Massachusetts law. I tried copying it, but it didn't come through. So. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I have a question. That sure. Was that uh, road discontinued the entirety from Route 5 to Mill Village? No. Or just portion of it? Just, the por just okay. to that culvert on the, the 5 culvert. and 10 side. Okay. That's what I'm sure. Because from 5 and 10 to the culvert, it's still... Right. Uh, right. Road, yes, so. okay. Yeah. Uh, Clark Cross Road is actually by Magic Wings, right? Is that the one? Yes. Excuse me? Yes. That's by Magic Wings, right? That's, yes. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and I have, the, like I said, I tried copying the, the Massachusetts general law that says, is this the worst copy? Um, that it can be changed, it doesn't have to be. Like I said, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. um, that if it changes hands, that it really should be put into the new owner's name, but I'm trying to take care of that. If it's put into the farm now, and then if it's passed down to Peter, it's already in the farm's name because the town still has a discontinuance sign up. And um, I yeah, just uh, want it to I, be a question. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm not sure what the procedure is, but we will hand it to Wendy. Okay. And she'll be back on Tuesday, and um, we'll get this process going. Okay. Um, it just made have to I, I thought it was, uh, yeah, I thought yeah, it was automatic. Think, no. It's it not says it's automatic in the law. Oh, it's, no, it's no, very it's hard to read. Oh, I guess what I don't, <clears throat> I don't understand. It says when, when it's um, altered by the selectman or road commissioner or by the county commissioners, which I don't think it was done by town meeting. I don't know if that. Well, it was a town meeting discontinued, so we didn't have to maintain right. it or upgrade it. Yep. And um, so what happens when you discontinue, you vote to discontinue Correct. a road or ban it's discontinued and abandoned. I understand. It, it reverts. Out of, I thought it reverted automatically to the landowners on each other's side. Right, but at some point that landowner's going to, you know, change from, it'll be far away farm, but Peter may be the, the owner at that time. So, yep. um, but I think Kip's question is at one point before all this, they went through in all the roads 
in town that were of question, and this was one of them, mm -hmm. and um, that's why it has to do with, um, you know. Yep. So that's where all that process started, and I think we had a whole town meeting about, you know, how much of the roads that were farm roads and whatever. And well, this was, um, the actual vote was at the annual town meeting. Right. Um, in 2001, so. Mm -hmm. um, 2001 or 10? No, it's 2001. Oh, wow. It was. Even older than I thought? Yeah, it's pretty, it's a while ago. So, um, I, we'll just give, we'll pass it on to Wendy. Okay. okay. I don't, I don't, it's not, it shouldn't be an issue, mm -hmm. um, because it was done. Right. And it was done so long ago that. Right. I mean, it's not really. But it's one of those things that, yeah. you know. That we I know, like we to should. clear up on ownership and make sure yeah. that it's someone doesn't come back and say to us, you know, we have the right to go on this road, and if we do want to block it off. So, sure. um, mm -hmm. and then the next question was the um, the paper I handed out about the um, um, the militia thing in front of our house. It goes literally from what this looks like. Um, just above Stillwater Road, like the end of the hill, mm -hmm. that flat part when you come up, excuse me, and then you go up to the top of the hill by Lee Road, yep. that intersection. That's owned by the town. The road and some, t and, and then some on both feet sides. On it's both a, sides. It's that swath of land on both sides of the road. Marshes mm -hmm. own one side, and then it's individual owners on the other side. Mm -hmm. yep. And um, since we maintain it, you know, we do all the plowing and everything else. Um, we've been at, you know, we the town took one tree down for us because it was such a um, rotten in the middle. And now the Steve got Eversource to take the second one down, but still the bulk of it's still standing, and we'd like it taken down. So, I mean, we spared the expense for the town not having to pay for it, but we have this big, huge chunk of wood that's standing in front of the house. And, um, you know, I'm sure. Are you talking in front of your house, Kathy? Yep. Um, 143 Mill Village. Okay, I guess what, what, what you pointed is? out was the strip of land here. That's not where their house is. No, it's right here. Is, is it, it's number 67? No. Uh, it no. would be, well, they, see. Their farm's down over here. Yeah, but this is sh this their, their house. This is before. This is from an old book, okay? This okay. isn't from the current so, book. So which, which lot is yours, Kathy? Um, is it 65 or 67? I would say 60. It's hard to tell because ours was lotted off. I think no. ours is 65. Okay. And then it was, if you put a line across, ours is, would be a little section. I, I, you see? Okay. Yeah. Are, are you talking about, well, unless I'm unsure, don't you live on the farm? No, no, that okay. Peter does. No, Peter oh, does. all right, so now that's why. Because <laughs> okay. I kept saying, no, they live here. So. Okay, so I think this was uh, Legalio's lot. Yes. That one. This is Uncle Sam's. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and then this is Legalio's, but then they cut ours off. So, so yours is actually not listed there. Okay. Ours is not listed. This is from okay. my old book. Okay. okay. But right. see, all this frontage here is gone from our, it's basically where my line, there's a line of trees. Sure. You can see where everybody's line. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, sure. when you drive okay. up and down. There. You can drive up yep. and down. You see where the row of button balls is, is pretty much where the edge of the property line is. Okay. And I know I've talked to, I haven't talked to the penners next door, but uh, I've talked to um, the neighbors down, two people down, and I'm sure Marshes would like to have that cleared up at some time. And I think the pasture is owned by the water district. I think Arthur Lucario gave it to the water district. Um, which is the big pasture here, but he owns some land in here, and he gave that to the water district, which is cornfield and pasture. So, um, but I'd just like it just to be straight, either. just the way the line goes, and, you know, at some point, get that back and get into our, our names. And I know some of the people have taken down trees on their own, even though it's town property, but because of the danger, and, not the town not being responsible for it. So, so, so the reason the town owned this was just for militia practice? I guess. Yeah, that apparently. Well, that was also where they were going to have the, um, it was layout for like a town. Common. Com I mean, it was a, 
there was going to be the new main, it was a main street kind of thing, mm -hmm. but then it went up to the old Deerfield. I see. It moved up. There's a lot of that. Point. Yeah. I mean, originally, that's, this was going to be, uh, I mean, that's be why it was street? extra wide yeah. oh. and all that kind of stuff, because that was going to be like the main street. Right. But hmm. then it moved up to the village to the, where Old Deerfield is right. now. When did that all take place? Oh, oh gosh, I don't know. I always knew it was the militia. 1710 or well, something? Well, I mean, some of those buildings in Old Deerfield have been there since the 1600s, so. Well, yes, but this, but this was, but this was for, I mean, obviously, if it was militia, it had to have been before pre-revolutionary, right. so. It was early 1700s yeah. anyway. Yeah. It'd be nice to uh, mark that. Yeah, well. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not sure what we're going to do on this, Kathy, oh, but I understand I, I just, your request. Yeah. So, um, again, I'm, putting it out I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say right. that it's attached because I'm responsible for minutes tonight. So okay. I'm not even sure what we're going to do on it, okay. uh, but I'm going to say see attached. Um, yeah. <laughs> see attached butterball. <laughs> <laughs> butterball, butterball trees question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's very obvious the way the maples yes. and the butterball, you They're can beautiful. see the, so beautiful. you know, um, how it goes. And it's both sides of the road. So, um, um, you know, at some point, I think probably all the, those um, landowners on either side, whether a house or farmland, would like to have it probably, you know, since everybody maintains it but the town. So, uh, let me... So I don't know how you want to approach it. I'm just putting yeah. it out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure how we'll we'll deal with it, but so you're um, basically looking to get more. Well, it's our frontage. Basically, we don't have the frontage on the road. The town owns the frontage on the road from our property. It's our like house sits it's back. Well, I, yeah, but, but let's it's just like say if this is your 10. house mm -hmm. and this might be the edge of the blacktop, but you're saying the town property comes this yep. far, and you just want. It's like the. It's you like still the get to fund. use it, and if you if we move it, you're just going to pay more taxes. You, but it's just. But the town doesn't want to take any responsibility for it either, you know, like taking down the trees, mowing it, or anything. We're doing it all. Right. Well, we'll 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 just we'll Keep figure out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I'd be willing. I'd be interested in some feedback on it, but. Um, yeah, you know, I, and I'm sure, you know, like I said, I haven't talked to the penners next door to the north, but I'm sure they would be interested in making sure that it was, you know, all their property too. So um, that's that. And the other question I had was, I know I had to write a special article at town meeting about the disposal of town property, and I see that the truck is still at the landfill. And was there an issue with it? And are the cruisers gone from the town garage? I know one of them has. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, but it was replaced it, by another one. It was. Oh. I know it was okay. stripped. <laughs> um, I don't know. Okay. I honestly don't know. But I know, like I said, I had to write a special thing at um, town art, um, town meeting, and gave it to Dan Graves. Is that who it is? Our moderator, mm -hmm. and um, to you know tell you to or advise you to or whatever, however. It, Instruct you, I guess that's the word I'm looking for, to dispose of that thing. And I mean, that truck's been there for at least three or four years. Cruisers what have been sitting this? there. I mean. What truck is it? The one at the landfill. The one at the landfill that hides behind the, whatever that little thing is there. And they keep it for what, for parts? or what do they keep Nothing, it, it hasn't moved. I don't know. I, come I, don't go I just don't know why it's not turned in. I mean, I can see. Yeah, or traded, I, or oh, if there's any value, there's whether no value. it's a, I'm sure no. it's no value. But. I'm sure it's no value either, but I, you know, that's one of the questions that down the road, if we're going to be replacing things, trade I, things I, in. I will have to be very honest with you, Kathy. I, I didn't follow up on it. Okay. And I, I will admit that I have no, no information from when you brought that up at town meeting. Okay. I will be very honest. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I knew I had to write a thing up at town meeting and hand it into Dan Graves, and I did, and um, <laughs> there's an instruction, whatever, however they put it. And I think we talked about the culvert on Mill Village. You said there's a meeting. Um, on January 24th, I hope everybody in town or anybody interested in town 
It will be um, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning and it will be going till 3.30. Lunch is being provided by Eagle Brook, which is wonderful. They're gonna cater it. Um, and it's a municipal um, vulnerability preparedness. And it's basically a takeoff on our hazardous mitigation plan. And um, the whole idea is to identify places in town that were vulnerable to um, climate change events, which is just about everywhere because we're at the bottom of the bowl. But um, we're really focusing in. Um, my intention is um, to uh, use this as one, of, we're gonna be one of the first in the state certified under this program and it will hopefully bump us to the top of the list. And as a result, um, we can pull in the state and fix uh, Richardson's Candy Kitchen culvert down through right to the river across Mill Village, that culvert that is temporarily repaired. And um, from Rop Wapping Road uh, across all, uh, down to the river on that side. It's still against Mill Village, but just further down. Um, it's been silted in from a, from a, a landslide since 2011, and um, it's a threat to septic systems up and down five and 10, and um, we really need people to show up so we can jump through this hoop and um, sign in. If you can't stay all day, that's not a big deal. The main thing is you come in, you say what you're concerned about. We have Bloody Brook. We have ditches that haven't been cleaned. We have stuff all over town. And um, so people need to come in, say what they're concerned about. I mean, obviously flooding is probably one of our ma major events, but it can be anything that people are worried about that's related to climate change and um, get it listed and participate and help us try to collect money. I mean, we're really gonna, I'm really hustling on this. And poor Trevor has been dragged along and I'm dragging Kip <laughs> and making sure that we're um, really gonna try to uh, make this productive. We've been working on this, or I've been working on this for probably at least 10 years trying to solve this problem. And it just keeps getting worse and worse and it gets more and more expensive. I mean, the fix from Richardson's Candy Kitchen, I would estimate based on the stuff I've been doing over the years, it's a million three. And that's a million three that we're trying to get that will not be taxpayer money. And um, so please participate. This what are the times again? What did you 10 say? 10 o'clock in the morning. We have to have an eight hour workshop. Okay. And what we're gonna do is my resilient communities meeting is meeting earlier and we're gonna morph in the resilient communities group that's up and down the Deerfield River and then into our community members. I mean, anybody can come to the resilient communities meeting too, but I think it would be probably nine o'clock to four o'clock is gonna be a lot for people. So what we're gonna do is have the resilient communities meeting morph into the MVP meeting and try to get as many people signed up and stay and overlap and mm -hmm. have people participate as much as possible and therefore we get a good showing. And in our resilient communities group, we get a lot of state agencies that show up. So uh, we're hoping to have them participate. Mm -hmm. um, NRCS has, uh, Rita has, mm -hmm. is, is Thibodeau has um, said she would be there. Vince Snyder, the state engineer is gonna be there. I mean, we have some um, fish and wildlife is going to be there. So we have some federal um, participants that are particip in, participate in our resilient communities group, and they're going to sign off on what the priorities are for us as a community. So that will lend, again, that will lend support towards us getting certified, and then also that this is a priority fix in our in our community. So I'm hoping their statements, their participation will carry a lot of weight, but we need community members to show up. So I'm asking you to show up as, a, as one of the primarily impacted um, air, uh, landowners in the area. And um, trying to get people to show up, calling people, telling them okay. to show up. So we will don't have- something in the paper so people know? Yeah, well, we ha we've had a couple articles in the paper, so. Mm -hmm. already it's just okay. it's not flashy <laughs> no. yeah. you have to show up 
Yeah, but it's really important. And, um, and, and if we're one of the first ones certified, then there's no way they can't give us some money for doing it. So, I mean, that's, when we go to the MMA conference, that's one of the things that I'm gonna chase down with um, the, um, uh, well, we'll nail, we need to nail the Department of Transportation and make sure they're gonna show up because mm -hmm. they're the ones we want permitting and designing the project. But, you know, we need to reach out to some of the other agencies and tell them that this is what we're doing and that they need to show up and, you know, be ready for our application and, Whatever. I would suggest you could put that on our web page. Whatever's been on there, I've seen every for the last months it hasn't changed. So, okay. I'll mm -hmm. get Pat to update it and make sure it's more as we get. It should, since we're getting closer, it should yep. be up there. Yep. Um, but anyway, so if you could come, Kathy, and try to get as many other people okay. as possible, it would just be wonderful. And again, if w signing in is probably the most critical, so that we, you okay. know that's proof to the state that we're you know, have mm -hmm. community input. Okay. Um, so is there anything else? Yes, there's actually okay. a couple other things. Um, I was wondering if I heard right during town meeting that they were gonna put a new fence up in the back of the cemetery in the center of town. And I haven't seen that it's been done. I know they replaced the front by the- um, Which cemetery? Sugarloaf? Sugarloaf? No, they run right off of Sugarloaf, right yeah. off of Sugarloaf. Um, they haven't done it because they have to take down a tree Mm -hmm. So when they take down the tree, they're going to put the fence up, okay. from what I understand. The, okay. tree, the tree removal is, is a huge deal. Mm -hmm. There was some concrete they had to get rid of, too. I yeah, think. I don't know. I don't, it was complicated. Path. And okay. it was, we but didn't want to put the forward. fence up until that was taken care of. Okay. And there was also, um, uh, there's, we're, we're putting a line item in for $20,000 to do <clears> trees, either trim or take down trees in all these different cemeteries is a one-shot deal. Mm -hmm. And I think we can get CPA money for that. Um, but I have to check, I haven't called. But it's a one-time deal and that will improve um, some of the situations in the, in the cemeteries. Okay, and the other thing was, you know, I've been a stickler about basically the trees, but also the sidewalks mm -hmm. in town and really no no sign of improvement and I realize a lot of those sidewalks are along Sugarloaf Street because yeah. our side streets don't have right. sidewalks. Very few of them do. And but my and I've been pointing this out for a couple years now is that uh, in Old Deerfield on the north end of town on the west side of the street the sidewalk is literally missing. It's a mud hole yes, and I, I just don't know why that hasn't been addressed. I mean there's been I saw the town crew working on filling in a little patch of grass that makes no sense because cars park along that grass and it just dies anyways. But I mean, all that time and money was spent fixing that patch of grass, but the sidewalk is still a mud hole. It's just non-existent. And since there's so many people walking the streets, whether it's students back and forth from the fields, whether it's public schools or private schools, they use those fields. And to me, and then just with the, um, all the people in town, the uh, tourists and even residents like mm -hmm. myself, you can't even walk there. I know. And it's just probably not even the length of the back of, probably half the length of this thing behind you. And um, I mean, Deerfield Academy, what they've done in the south end of town, the stuff they've dug up and replaced, those sidewalks are beautiful. Mm -hmm. The, you mean you actually can fit three people across right. as opposed to two and falling off? So That's a huge, I mean, huge goal of mine this year is to, yes, to work on that. Yes, it had, so. but it's, you know, like I said, this one has been a big issue of mine towards that north end of town because yep. of safety and everything. And sure. um, <clears throat> I can't tell you, ex again, how, many, how much I would like to get the sidewalks we're, done. It's going to happen this year. And we're just uh, going to bite the bullet. And and start working on a piece at a time. Yep. Mm -hmm. I the well, I can understand that, but I mean this I car know. in Old Deerfield has been there forever. Mm -hmm. Why it was taken up? I don't know if it's historic Deerfield took it up. If if um, the town took it up, I have no idea. But that part of it's the been at least ten years that I'm aware of that there's not been any sidewalk there. So I have no idea, mm. Kathy. Your daughter lives very close to that, so if she I know, walks I walk that it. way. I walk it. 
quite a bit with her. So I am very aware of that there's no sidewalk there. There's no, it just abruptly ends. <laughs> yes. Where it should. And it's a, it is a darn mud hole. It's it mostly is a mud, a mud hole. hole. Yeah. So yeah. I, I honestly don't know. But okay. It's a huge goal. I, it's going to happen this year. I, I feel like, you know, every year that is a request of mine, and mm -hmm. it has been for a long time because... Mm -hmm. So many people walk the sidewalks and stuff. And so many people your walk biggest, your in, biggest. you know, in safety. I mean, literally, yeah. when we I walk know. in Old Deerfield once a week when the weather is nice, there's, you know, um, to me, it's a town responsibility. There's tree limbs, I mean, hanging. I looked at your tree study over there. Um, I appreciate your phone call that you, when you called me about it. Um, you know, there's tree limbs hanging dead from trees. And like I said, there's students, there's tourists. Sure. I mean, the town's liable. People, the town trucks drive through there. They've got to have some kind of piece of equipment to get those limbs out of there. They're, there was one hanging from in front of, you know, um, the farm, Yaswinski's farm, that was very dangerous. And, um, I mean, those are simple things that I think our town, without having to go out and buy equipment, can, can handle on their own. Um, so that's my issue on that one. And then the last one was, I haven't heard anything more about the Oxford site. Is um, that still going? We have, we have an extension that will, um, for the New England Bakery. It, when we went to close on it with them, um, their lawyer found out that we did not uh, publish two weeks in a row. And so that took months to get straightened out. And um, we did get the governor to sign off on it finally, mm -hmm. as, a, as our mistake. But the person they were working with, the financial person they were working with, changed banks to out into the Berkshires. And so they had to start all over again because they're, they're a cooperative, an mm -hmm. employee cooperative. So I guess it's hard, or no, not a lot of people are interested in lo loaning that kind of group of money. Mm -hmm. So. Um, they ha got a new lawyer, and I think they, the new lawyer encouraged them to just follow the person that was working with them out to the Berkshires bank that he transferred to, and, um, and that's the last we've heard. Wendy is, will be following up on it. We, I just was on the phone with her today, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and that was one of the things she, that we asked that she follow up on. Mm -hmm. And are they going to? And the other question about that site, they, are they, I, they close are definitely that road? what they are definitely interested, Kathy. Oh yeah, but are they going to close that road at that end by the their street associates? Do oh, you know what I, mean? I I don't I don't know what the final layout is. I okay. mean, it's been what I don't long know, long time, long time since yeah. we were given the design. So, and I'm sure the design might change and mm -hmm. whatever. So I I can't I don't know what's going on. But is that your decision or theirs? Is it something? Well, they, we, uh, we, it's their property at the moment, and um, we're asking, you know, they. Are that right away, you mean? Well, it's part of their property, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know what, the, what they're going to finally do, one way or the other. Oh, okay. I was, just wasn't sure, because I know at some point I had heard that it was going to be closing or closed off. I think it would be, because I think the, the Meriden, right, goes to a certain spot, stops, and then that Thayer Street. Extension but there was also to do stuff. with the water, there exactly. was water access the water line and, and which way stuff they would come in from. I don't yeah. know. It, there was some question about changing that, and it made sense. And we wanted them to bring the water up American Way versus coming in the back way and mm -hmm. doing this loop to the loop thing. But um, we don't really know. So we're hoping that this will be finalized, and if not, then we're going to move on to something else. And how much longer on the, the um, EMS building? Well... A couple of months, I think. Really? Yeah. Um, Dick had said March 1st, um, potentially. I think the building might be done, but what Kip had brought up was um, uh, was that the ground might be so frozen that the, you know, we wouldn't be able to get asphalt down. Mm -hmm. So um, that might slow up the access of the building. But yeah. we honestly don't know very much because we're not supposed to be involved in it. Okay. <laughs> but the last I heard, Dick had said March 1st. It was probably, you know, end of February, March 1st. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we would be able to move in, as Kip said, because potentially the 
driveway wouldn't be able to get done. Yeah. Well, they don't start making asphalt till a certain time anyways, mm. right? Yeah. Depends on the weather. Yeah. yeah. It depends on the weather. Right. But and it's just been kind of what, we'll, what we get, what we may have to continue to work on. You yep. know, we're not sure what, what we'll get for a final product. So. And when does all that go into effect? The, um, your agreement with the other two towns? I mean, does, is there a timeline on that when the agreement went to, you, to get in there and when the oh, rent no, starts it's, it's, and all no, that? No, it's all, no it has it's nothing to do with the other yeah. towns. Yeah, okay. no. yeah, it's all, I mean, it's all, all South County EMS. Yeah. The building has to get turned over to us, obviously, before right. we yeah. can move in. Right. But, so we don't really know anything else beyond that, okay. except hopefully it will get done sooner than later. Mm -hmm. yes. Can't wait. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I was talking to um, Trevor before the meeting, and um, he asked about the digester. I figured while I was here, I'd give you a quick update. Yeah, sure. Thank it is you. up and running. Wonderful. Oh, that's it's great I'm news. glad it finally is. Up and is. running, finally. And um, I told them it's just amazing because they can fluctuate. They fluctuate how much is our power is produced um, from a computer, from Pennsylvania, from wherever. So I don't get amazing too involved technology. in it, but it is up and running. It is producing and. Um, Hopefully there'll be no flares, so everybody can people can stop calling the fire department saying that the house out back is on fire. <laughs> that happened quite often, I guess. Is that right? Oh yeah. <clears throat> because of the stacks were. Yeah. Well, it up. wasn't connected, so they had to. So they were burning the burn off, off a lot. Right. Yeah. 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 So it depends on what that. angle you were coming with, and it looked. It looked like the house was on like fire. The, the house was on fire, whatever the weather conditions were at the time. But. Yep. Um, uh, I knew in the springtime, excuse me, when it was supposed to be hooked up and running that we were planning on having an open house. Mm. And that got delayed because of the hookup. And yep. so hopefully we'll follow through or they'll follow through with an open house. And um, I'd love to come so, and you see. Know, to the townspeople and yeah. people who have questions and want to come and see what it looks like. Well, I had, I had gone to that digester out in the Berkshires and that, you know, uh, NRCS had organized that I don't know visit a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and so it would be it, it's really educational. So oh, I, it's I would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. and mm. so it is like a really nice thing. So yeah. that would be wonderful, Kathleen. Yeah. So that's great news. That's it. Any great. questions of me? All right. Okay. No, well, I just. I'll um, see you at the meeting. I'll like, gather up some more people. For yeah, it would just be really fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, you know, even if people can only stay a little bit, it's yep. just. They need to come in. They need to suggest what their priorities are and participate. And so, it'll be a meeting like this? Um, it's going to be uh, a group. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have the. I left the folder in my car. But it um, it's going to be uh, a workshop in the sense that people are going to list what their concerns are. Going to break. There's going to be breakout groups as to what um, could be the possible solutions and. Um, but the main thing is you have to you want to be able to prioritize areas that are f of focus, huh. and um, I'm trying to gather people to focus on mm -hmm. that one and or that area for sure. But we have several areas down here like bloody along the bloody brook that really need to be have focus too. And mm -hmm. I've had a lot of complaints over the years um, from different you know, areas on north, off of North Main Street, and it would be really wonderful if those people could come in. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you just, it, it, it's, it's to counter climate change, and it's part of the climate change um, compliance that, the, that the, t the state has adopted and how they spend their money, and it's environmental bond money, so it, there is money attached to this, and so I'm, I'm really worried we have been working since 2005 through NRCS and the EWP program for all our stuff. And I would say probably we've, we've had well over $4 million since 2005 mm -hmm. through NRCS in town to fix town stuff or the conservation district, you know, has a little money here and there. But um, what, what I'm concerned is that that's awful Sam Clovis, that he's a wingnut guy from He's gonna. He might potentially be the new NRCS head. Mm -hmm. He's the one that was supposed to be the USDA scientist, and there was some kind of scandal, and he got withdrawn. Remember all that? Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, he's still floating around, and he might be the. And 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 the budget, the original President Trump's budget. I mean, we're still under Obama's re continuing resolution, so hasn't had any impact. 
NRCS hasn't had any, as you know, hasn't mm -hmm. had any cutbacks yet, but under his budget, there's like a 40% cut in NRCS's budget. Mm -hmm. And we're already bare bones. I mean, Rita's doing the all Western right. Mass now when she used to just do our county. Right. Um, but she's all over the state and, and is, is really responsible for all of Western Mass now. And so I, I think Chris Clark's, um, our state conservationist, uh, has cut, uh, cut personnel um, uh, almost 60% wow. of what it used to be when, mm -hmm. when C C Cecil was the mm -hmm. state conservationist, I don't know, 2003, 2005. So is this just for Deerfield? Or is this other towns going to be no, in on this? Well, the MVP is um, just, is just for Deerfield. Just for Deerfield. And every community can participate. There's a few of us. We, we got a small grant. Um, I think it was $15,000 grant to hire Chris Curtis. Or you hire someone. Mm -hmm. We hired Chris Curtis, who was a planner, um, retired planner from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And he's coming and organizing this and filling out all the paperwork so that we can participate in the program. And what that does is, like I said, hopefully will give us it's a hoop you have to jump through. We'll be one of the first communities to actually be certified. We've been undoing this resilient communities group for six years. We have all the information, all the stuff that they want. Mm -hmm. the, we, there's nobody ahead of us. And so we're going to be one of the few first ones to get certified. And hopefully, the, being the first in line for money, they'll give us some money. And that's the whole point of this. So okay. it, it really would be important to show up. So okay. thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks. And hopefully we'll everyone. fix those culverts. So, oh. so you just have to come and complain about them. <laughs> well, it's just dangerous. There's kids, same other issue with safety. There's, it is. I know. You know it is. Running, it is. Bikes. I, I Everybody know. wants to be out. And, mm -hmm. you know, I know. And nobody knows who goes first. You know, it's one of those angel stories. So. Yep. I know. Thank you, Kathy. No, thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is creating the Deerfield 350th Anniversary Committee. We just have to vote to do uh, the committee. Kathy, you might be interested in participating in this, just to let I you know. I was here for the 300th. I was too. <laughs> I have my and little keychain. Steve's beard to prove it. <laughs> I know. Um, but anyway, uh, so I so would entertain I make, a motion. I make a motion to create the Deerfield 350th Anniversary Committee. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So it's um, constitute a group. Yes. Um, we have actually three or four volunteers already. Um, and uh, it would be wonderful if people want to um, step forward. Mm -hmm. I think the idea is, is not till 2023, but the idea is to celebrate and have um, some kind of celebration all through 2022 to build mm -hmm. up to 2023. But also, um, a lot of communities like Shelburne and um, Berniston and, and Conway just had their Sunderlands Sunderland. having theirs. So people need to go to different um, communities to see what they're doing. And then the really fun stuff, anything that impresses you, is we want to be able to do. Mm -hmm. So if we organize it, um, I know we're putting in a little bit extra money into the budget for... Um, which is PEG money anyways, it's not taxpayer mm -hmm. money, but to have um, Chris Collins interview some of our elders right. in town and get their stories, you know, about Oxford Pickle, picking tobacco, any, any uh, interesting stuff that mm -hmm. was happening in town that um, they want to tell. We can do so much. Yeah, this kind and of so I, I just right. think it is, could be really exciting. And so I wanted to wait until fun. 2018 because it's going to be a good year. Yes. And we're going to do it. Okay. Next item on the agenda is Zoning Board of Appeals. We have two um, people that are interested. Um, uh, I would entertain a motion for... Um, Richard? So, uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to appoint Richard Kalaszewski to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a term beginning January 10th, 2018 and ending June 30th, 2021. Given the Deerfield, Massachusetts, the 10th day of January 2018. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Sorry, I have to write this down. And then, uh, and then we're going to have another applicant. Make a motion to appoint uh, Catherine L. Felton to 
the Zoning Board of Appeals as the alternate uh, for the term beginning January 10th, 2018 and ending June 30th, 2021, given at Deerfield, Massachusetts, this 10th day of January, 2018. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, let's, we need to sign that. Oh, you sign Yeah. This? Here. Take any one or? Yeah, why don't we just take this, these, those two, you sign them. Okay. Um, New business under new, we already did public comment. We're not going to executive session, but under new business, there's two items that um, have come up uh, that were not anticipated. Um, as a result of the planning board meeting on Monday, I've been going through the new bylaws um, for marijuana mm -hmm. and making a list of um, things that we would want to commit to on the um, special permit. And so far I haven't found anything that is different than what our list would have been for the medical marijuana, you know, buffers, mm -hmm. you know, 500 feet away from schools and all that kind of stuff. So um, the security stuff I have to run by um, John Porchorik to make sure that there isn't anything. So, um, but it's 107 pages and I've, I've only gotten to 48 so okay there could be some other things but I'll keep working on it and then I'll run it by you um, both and we can talk about it if we necessary on the 24th is that all right mm -hmm. Fine. I just want to make sure that we have something to hand to Pat Smith and Adam Costa yep that is our input on the special permit that we're concerned about okay and Adam's going to be here I think the he's going to be February. here yes he's going to be here for the um, the 5th of February, the planning board meeting. Yeah. Um, and then they're going to schedule a public hearing for two weeks after that, which would be what we want, we have to take to the newspaper. So mm -hmm. it would probably be um, the end of February, uh, just to make sure we have no issues with publications. And then. Um, then, we, then it will be okay for to put it on the warrant for town meeting. Okay. The, the, um, the main thing is to make sure we're, we, we have to have, I, I know you're worried about the whole legality with the attorney general, but the cannabis commission is still going forward. They're gonna issue licenses. I just wanna make sure that we have our regulations mm -hmm. in, in um, force, where, what we want to do and, what, and how we wanna restrict it. And, get and, and permit it. And yes. then also I want to make sure that we have the 3% tax on it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have voted that 3% tax and they issue a license, you have to wait another whole year. So it's like Before a you collect. free, right. free, I mean, someone's going to have to pay for, we're, we're going to have to pay for all this stuff mm -hmm. um, until we can be able to collect the tax. So we got we to gotta make sure we have the tax. And if we sit on the permits at the, Mm -hmm. Or we decide we're still very nervous or it's not clarified. You know, they haven't taken on California and Colorado at this point, and it looks like it's a little iffy. Then we just, you know, don't issue the special permit. But the question, the, the idea the is the just to is have done. everything done so mm -hmm. that we're not wide open. And it's, it's really, it's not a question of if it's coming, it's just when. And we just need to be prepared. Mm -hmm. and, so I'm going to a couple meetings. We'll get some more information. Hopefully we'll have stuff for the public hearing so it's a little bit less disorganized than it was the other night, and um, we'll move forward. Well, it looks like they have the draft regulations out. Well, that's what they comment. have. They have, They have. it's 107 and be, pages in and it. And there'll be a FERCOG, right? Yeah, it's for, at the FERC. Fe February 6th. Yeah. That. But they'll also have tons of stuff at the... MMA conference. Yes, and I'm anxious to get. The most important thing is that you just we got to reach out to some other communities to see what how they're handling it. Yeah. Um, I I'm, I mean I I don't really care one way or the other. But I, what is a problem? I mean we seriously have a, the, probably the best police department in the county, and from my seat at Homeland Security, probably the best police department in Western Mass. But how do you regulate it? I mean it's not like liquor where you do a breathalyzer and right. I mean we're putting our I mean how do our officers enforce impaired driving and stuff mm -hmm. and that's a really serious question and I I don't know other than to say that 
we have a really proactive police department, so mm -hmm. people ought to know that if they smoke marijuana and they're impaired and they're driving through Deerfield, they're going to get caught. Yep. And, you know, I mean, that's the message we have to send out, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So whatever it's going to be, this is the kind of stuff we need to yeah. reach out to other communities and saying, aren't you concerned about this? What are you going we'll to do? How, how, to how are you going to do it? Yeah. So well, anyway. That being said, it does raise the question of, so you say people... We want to make it clear that if you're smoking marijuana and you're high, you come through deer for you're going to get caught. How do you know you can catch them? Well, that's, and if you stop them, how do you prove it? You know? Well, that's so what that's, I'm saying. It's, it's really hard to regulate. But we just have to look, say that we're going to be on the road and, you know, our, we do. We have a, you know incredibly active police department. Oh, so I, guess what? That's the, they already people the know that they not to do stuff in Deerfield. Yeah. So we just have to make it a louder it's more strident. Hope it's not smoldering in the ashtray, right? Yeah, <laughs> whatever. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we got to sort this out. There's a lot to sort out. There and is. It makes me really nervous. It's true. And I feel like we're getting really pushed, but not doing anything is is a bad decision for us as a community. And mm -hmm. so we just have to do something. Yep. Um, so anyway, so there's that. And then the other thing that came up um, um, last night at the... Uh, Capital Improvement Committee meeting was, um, it, I've been worried about, you know, the sewer committee stuff mm -hmm. and w what are we going to do? And and so I brought it up last night. It's, would they accept from us, the sewer commissioners, an application for, um, you know, channel clear, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the auger monster cleaner. kind of thing, cleaner. And um, so when we go to the MMA, we need to reach out to some vendors. But... Um, uh, I w wanted us to vote. I was hoping that we would vote to move forward on that and get mm -hmm. it to the, sure. to the capital in committee that they s s appeared to be open to that, even though we've missed the deadline. Okay. Um, and, the, and the reason I had gone through that, I put it in your yes, box. Kip I've already got it had a um, thing. Yep. I, I went through that, and actually there was not a lot of information on the auger. Uh, the, uh, anything to do with the auger. It was more like nitrogen and phosphorus I had questions on that we need to follow up on that too. Right. But, um, and Kip had some um, interesting observations. But um, I, I feel like even though we're going to send out the RFP and we're going to get all this information, I don't think that this channel cleaner is going to be a waste of money because we can plop it in in the summer mm -hmm. uh, if we vote it. It can go in, we can order it and, you know, pay for it in the 1st of July. It can be put down. Um, it will chop up our sludge because one of the things I'm really concerned about in reading all this material is that our sludge is so bad that we have had to shift to where we take it and that we actually might lose our, our uh, vendor. And so here we are paying all this money for hauling, and we're having a fit about hauling Costing fees. But we actually might not even have a vendor that will take it. So then we have storage issues. We have to do some money for storage. So it seems like if we clean up our sludge temporarily, that's a good move because we can maybe go back to our old vendor and cut our hauling fee. We won't be at risk for losing our vendor. And... Um, once we decide what to do with the head works or whatever, you can unbolt it, apparently. Yep. Mm -hmm. Move it. We can move it to, old, move Deerfield, it to old Deerfield. Or we can sell it or do something with it. It's 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 a good piece of equipment. I think it's a equipment. smart investment. I completely so agree. Do you think that that I've, I've spent a little time looking for used ones. And what I've run into is that there are none available. And some people have actually said to me, if you see some, let me know. You because know, they, they, use, they them use them and it lasts. Yeah, they use them. Yeah. Well, it, the way that it's, it's like any piece of machinery. It's made of multiple parts. But the parts that wear out aren't very expensive, you know, so it, you, can, you can replace different things. And, well, I feel like we've got to do something. Mm -hmm. The $30 million right. or $40 million price tag that's hanging over us is, is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I don't, nobody wants to jump in, and I totally get it. I, it doesn't make sense to jump into it, but we can cut some operating costs. We can potentially not ha lose a vendor, which, I, I mean, having the store, having to store the sludge is, I mean, well, that potentially could it'll, be a It'll also problem. improve the, the, 
the ability for the plant to run, not yeah, processing all that I stuff know. and running out there and, and, cutting and we all have that to do, stuff. I mean, we ha if we put it in the summer, we have a few months to figure out how to protect it in the winter. And mm -hmm. I, I spoke to Kevin briefly today about that hauling and stuff like that. And um, from my understanding is that, you know, we deal with uh, the Franklin Solid Waste um, Coalition, whatever. So I'm going to reach out to their um, point person and find out, you know, how bad of a situation that Deerfield might potentially be in with the quality of our sludge and issues like that, just so I know, you know, yeah. not that it's going to change. Well, it, I was just going to say you can confirm it, but what I would worry about is if, if truly, if our sludge is that much of an issue, and we if we lose, lose the vendor, vendor, yeah, definitely. There is no well, way that's, to take it that's to it. what I want. Yeah. I want. I'd like to hear it right from. Yeah. Him or her. Because then it's like mm. a, a crisis. We got to store the stuff, and yeah. that doesn't yeah, make well, sense. I'm not. I don't know the exact amount, but I'm thinking that it's six to eight thousand gallons a week. So I mean, storage would be a problem. <laughs> yeah. in a real well, that's absolutely. What I mean, why would you? I mean, right. We need to be proactive on exactly. that. And I, I just, I, it is, it is a serious issue. The serious yep. amount of money. But I, I feel like we've got to do something in this. And reading all the material, mm -hmm. this just seemed like the only thing that was. And we, we were thinking a budget of maybe 200 to request. So I make a motion that we uh, put a request to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee for um, a request of 200,000 for a channel cleaner, mm -hmm. auger monster type of item um, to be expended this year. And, and, and put we'll try to nail down the quote a little yeah. bit. Yep. And I'll second the motion. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And Aye. I, will, I will provide you with quotes, but it is if you guys are going to that MMA thing, I'm sure that you will find plenty of vendors out yeah. there. Uh, the, the, the two people that I spoke to both told me that they have booths at the MMA Great. thing. So can you, can you get that information I will. to us I will. so that we yep. know we'll, what we're talking we'll about? Yeah, one, of, one of them is Franklin Miller. They're the producer and whoever their sales rep okay. is. Okay, there. good. You know. Yep. Um, Thank you. Thank you guys for supporting me. No, I, I just, think it's a great I just idea. Felt we need to get we moving had to on do it. something. Yep. But I was not willing to commit to anything else. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's fine to get started on that. Okay. Do you also um, and then there was um, the home business. Yep. Um, so we, we missed a Deerfield Healing Arts home business. So um, I make, I, want me to make a, make a yeah. motion to approve um, a home business renewal uh, permit for or license for the Deerfield Healing Arts at 194 North Main Street, South Deerfield, Mass. I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You know what? Um, I screwed up. These votes have to have who made the motion, and I haven't taken notes for a while. So, so. I had uh, made. For the anniversary, it was you? Yep. And then Kip seconded. For Richard, I made the motion. Yep. Trevor seconded. Okay, wait, wait. And vice versa for Catherine. Yep. Okay, so you were um, yep. Kip. It was Kip, Kip and then me, and then me, and then Kip for Kathy. Okay. Yep. And then and you then, were the healing arts one. Yep. And it was also the um, Agra Monster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The sewer, 200,000. Yep. Okay, um, is there any other business? Well, I, I'd like to talk briefly about the letter we got from the water supply district about the yeah. common fountain. Thank okay. you. you know, I'd like to I, talk about that too. I'm I, okay. I see that they were notifying us that um, they're ten they have tentative plans to discontinue supplying water to the fountain on the Deerfield Common as of July 1st, 2018. It says that they are doing this for purposes of water conservation. Um, and, and I totally get that because I'm sure that it's at least a three-quarter inch pipe that runs, so there's thousands of gallons. But doesn't that recycle? No, it doesn't circulate? recycle. No, well, why don't we recycle? It runs off of pressure. And, and, and I was thinking the exact same thing. Why not just, yeah. you know, put a pump? But then, but on the other hand, this fountain runs off of the water pressure, and the pressure comes because our reservoir is higher than the center of town. And... If you put in a pump, it's not going to take a lot of electricity, but still burning electricity, you well, know, to circulate this thing. Power. And I, I don't know if we could, you know, we might be able to do a solar power pump, but I don't know if it'd be strong enough. But, but what I think about is that our groundwater table is not that deep, 
So the water's just going back into the ground, and so, I, you know, it's... I, I do not want to see that fountain go. I, I mean, don't either. I mean, that's been there for... Yeah, I know. I just, it's, it's such it's, a focal point of deer. I was it just going to say it's pretty... It's just a, I mean, I, I mean, know... I believe in water conservation. I get where they're coming from. I do, too. It, let's... I, put I our would heads together to figure yeah, out like a way to, to do this yeah, efficiently. Yeah, talk to them about it because I, I do get it, and, and my first instinct is sure, what a great way to save, but the alternative to keep that running is to burn electricity. Right. You know, and this thing basically run, it runs for nothing, and the, you know, as it rains, it feeds our reservoir, and if we ever had a water shortage or came close to a water shortage, I think, sure, you could Absolutely. shut that off in a heartbeat. Right. But until that point, it isn't like we're dumping water that we're never, it's, it's the nature cycle. It goes into the ground, it, comes it gets back evaporates, out. it rains, and yeah. it's... I agree. You know. I just think it's such a focal point of the town. I just do not want to see that thing shut off. Yeah. And um, there's got, even if we use, you know, uh, the, the stuff, you know, the credits we get from our solar farm, I mean, there's got to be ways to fund right. some way yeah. to keep that thing going. Well, I, I mean, a pump would be a very simple way to do it. It's just that you're, you're burning electricity. You're right. and you you're know, right. Like but so. maybe we could do a, some little solar thing. I mean, it's, I, I can't I, imagine. The thing about it is to, to make it look like it does, it would have to be a, enough of a substantial pump that it yeah. would take a fairly good-sized solar oh, okay. thing. Right. You know, you're not going to do it with a two-foot square solar thing. Right? Gotcha. Okay, so I'm gotcha. putting this down as a discussion not to end right. yeah. um, to the fountain. Yeah. Uh, uh, we all agree. Yeah. We're going we're to work on this and figure Find this out. Find some way to make it Absolutely. Happen. I mean, it's just, it's so beautiful. I, I would, is, I would just, be very sad. You know, the other day, Caleb's looking at it. Look, look at the fountain. The thing's gotten so big now with the ice that's, I yeah. mean, it's probably melted in the last couple of days, but it's gotten pretty tall. It's just, a, it's a beautiful thing. Well, you know, I, people reflect If their, you've ever been through West Brookfield in the wintertime, and they're coming, they have a huge fountain, and they always leave lights on inside, and it's I don't know, I'm going to guess 20 feet tall. Okay. And it's this huge glob of ice, and the, the lights are on inside the ice. It's beautiful. That's cool. Yeah. That's a cool idea, too. Ours isn't quite that tall, but right. it's still... Yeah, but Kip, I don't care. It's really pretty. I, I mean, it's, it's just really one more pretty. thing that... I, I can't stand it, that We do... We spend so much money on stuff that is ugly and doesn't show. And <laughs> I know, and that's why I... I, 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 I think mean, we, why can't we just do some stuff that makes stuff... Pretty. Right, and, I right. mean, to end the fountain, that's just, that's too much. It is. Since I'm sorry. I'm I didn't want to interrupt Kathy earlier, but, you know, talking about the sidewalks and stuff, that was, uh, you know, an, especially in, in our downtown area where we do have a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, well, Sugarloaf, we, can't, um, I, I want to I say that Sugarloaf Street, Kevin has really been pressuring the state, and the state yes. is going to be doing something right. on mm -hmm. Sugarloaf. Okay, Elm. We're responsible for Elm Street, Let's and there's just no darn way. I mean, I get, I, we get pushed off all the time. And so no, if gonna, we collectively say that's what we want to do, that's then this is what we're going to do. I really then, don't think, uh, I mean, to, to do sorry, that sidewalk bit, from Jerry's place down to where Leaders is uh, would not be astronomically expensive. I really think it could be done for $10,000. You know, well, do a concrete we'll just, and, and have we it, need to everything have in Kevin place. Give us a, um, get a quote, and we just need to do it. bring it to the mm -hmm. finance committee and say, and you know, Kevin really it. needs to do this. Yes. Yeah. Look at you know, name. he needs to contract it and out at, for the And share. at the same time, um, we should also look into some uh, fairly low street lights. Right. And, and, and I'm not saying like this, but as you're going into Greenfield, um, there's some on Deerfield Street. They put in these lights near that little condo, part. Yes. something like that. Because nice. then what we could do is we would own those lights. They could be LED, extremely inexpensive Absolutely. to run. And then we could go to the power company who's blackmailing us for those lights on the pole and say, you know what, take them off. We don't yep. want them. Agree. Agree. You know? And, and then and we can have, then we can put banners, we can, right. can hang it would, flowers to It would to be them. nice. And I think in that section, even if you only had five or six along exactly. that section, it lighted up. It would look. Nice and uh, I want to know, dress up there. one I'm, mistake not to I'm, make is to, you buy something that's you know the lighting company says that it's been around it's a popular model don't get something that oh yeah that's pretty but two years from now they don't make it anymore right exactly you know? so you want to get yeah. something nice timeless right you know yep pretty very pretty yep. very pretty okay. I really want to get working thank on that. you I would be thrilled I would I'm be excited thrilled. this okay. year we're going to do some good and, stuff. and the reason I think that they should go in conjunction is because 
you have to put foundations into those street lights and you have to wire it. So yep. There's no sense of spending money to put in a sidewalk and dig it up to put Absolutely. wires and stuff. Yeah, all at the same time. Yep. All at the same time. Yep, I agree. Well, let's get Kevin to get a quote and we'll, I'll, we'll get say on that. that it is a priority to, for us to mm -hmm. the Finance Committee. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. All right. That would be great. That would be very nice. Else. I'd appreciate it. No. Else? I mean, no. we just, uh, I didn't really have much for comments other than, than to just mention that we've been working on budgets. Um, we've been looking at um, different town departments and see where we're, we're at and compiling yeah. that. The school committee has put out their budget for, at least for the Deerfield Elementary. I don't think Frontiers is out yet, but. Um, no, we're just still working on stuff. We're, um, so we'll, this is the we'll month to on, compile. Yeah, and we're, we'll, um, Put together our stuff for next week when mm -hmm. we go to the MMA. Oh, just also to mention that um, if anyone does, doesn't know yet, but um, superintendent appointed Tina Jem, um, our permanent principal at, at Deerfield Elementary School, and the whole community is extremely uh, happy with that move. Um, she's really um, turned the atmosphere around there the kids love her parents are are, are enjoying it uh, staff are, are thrilled so good good things going on at, at uh, deerfield elementary hmm. good thank you trevor for yeah. bringing that up i forgot about yep. that it's great news all right i'll take it enter entertain a motion to adjourn i make a motion to adjourn second all those in favor aye aye, aye.